Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our uh, global Nimble community and audience. I wanted to start by saying thank you for taking time today to join us uh, for some inspiration and education. My name is John Ferrara, CEO of Nimble, and I am super excited to have my dear friend Wes Schaefer here with us today to teach us some secrets that he's learned uh, through his military experience to grow sales, improvise, and overcome. Wes, say hello. Hello, hello. And so let's uh, let's learn a little bit about you, Wes. So I first met Wes because in order to build my personal brand and my professional brand and the Nimble brand, I went out and started swimming in the social river to begin to consume more knowledge. So I sought out people who inspired and educated me. And Wes, you stood out. Uh, you, you stood out for your, because uh, you're real, you're raw, and uh, and you speak uh, the truth, and you deliver knowledge, and uh, and you're fun. And and so uh, I started to engage with you, and we built a relationship. And what I love about you is that you're you're there to help business people grow their business with practical knowledge about how to do it in sales and marketing. And that's why I asked you to come on the show today to teach us a little bit about the basics. Because I think that we're all a little bit distracted uh, these days. So I'm super excited to uh, hear your words. Thanks for having me, man. I'm You've been on my show three times, believe it or not. I have. I and I'm lucky and honored. <laughs> All right. And so those that don't know anything about me, my name is John Ferrara. Uh, I'm in the relationship management business. Uh, Wes, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I got started in this business because I struggled to manage relationships. I couldn't find a tool to do it effectively. There was no Outlook. There was no Salesforce. There was no CRM. There was no team contact manager. And so we built Goldmine and it turned out to be one for us. I got back in the business after spending 10 years raising my babies because I saw a need for uh, a, a new version of uh, Goldmine, a more nimble version of a contact platform that automatically works for you by building itself and the data you already have in your business and then works for you every, with you everywhere you work. Because if you have to go to your CRM to use it, you won't do it. And that's the biggest cause of failure of CRM is lack of use. The second's bad data. Because even if you type stuff into a computer, it decays. So you, what you need is a serum that automatically builds itself and then lives where you engage in email and in social. Uh, let's do a little bit of uh, housekeeping for uh, for those that uh, want to learn more about Nimble. There's daily Q&A sessions. We have weekly webinars. Uh, go to www.nimble.com company webinars to sign up. And in the future, Nedia, let's change that font to a white font and uh, expand that blue border because it's hard to read. And um, let's get into the agenda. Uh, before we start with the agenda, please, please, please ask questions. We'll be compiling questions in the background, answering them uh, as we go, and then answering them in total at the end. And um, I guess that's it. Take us away, Wes. Yeehaw. I'm just bummed the camera's not on, man. I, I shaved and, and showered for you. Well, okay, at least I showered. But look, we're gonna get into uh, applying these military secrets to grow your sales, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And I got uh, an Air Force TI there. So in the, in the Air Force, they're called uh, training instructors, not drill instructors. I don't know, they wanna be different. But I actually spent six weeks down there at Lackland Air Force Base back in 1990. Uh, and it is just like that. And I put that picture uh to illustrate a point uh, you know one of the key things the military does is break you down and then build you back up and i was uh it was a summer it was june 1988 flew up to colorado springs um i was given clothing just like this i still have that white usafa tea they're called um they shave your head and they start yelling at you immediately on the bus before you even get off the bus and you know, I thought I, I had my my act together. I'm a big guy. I was recruited for football. I was, you know, fourth in my high school graduating class. I was your big man on campus, right? I'm like, I got this. I got this. No, I did not have this. 
they start yelling at you, you get off the bus and they hand you three green duffel bags and three name tags on a piece of string. And you have to write your name and tie that string onto those bags. I was so nervous. I, my hands were shaking so bad I could not tie a knot. And I got extra attention because I was taking too long. And that was literally the first three minutes of my introduction to the military. And that's when I realized this quote way before I'd ever heard of this guy, right? We don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. And this applies to sales and marketing, um, and especially sales because everything is, is sales. Your marketing, the headline, the type of font you use, what kind of envelope you use, uh, what the first sentence says, is it bold, is it italicized, are there images? It's all a sale, okay? You're, you're fighting for their attention. And then when somebody gets on the phone with you, you know, eventually when we're back to meeting face to face, when they come to your trade show booth, when they walk into your storefront, are you ready to engage, right? Um, have you practiced this enough to seize the opportunity and make the most of it. And I'd say most are not, and we'll get into that. Um, today is uh, the anniversary of the, the extortion 17, was the greatest loss of uh, Naval Special Warfare officers uh, or, or personnel ever. And um, this will be my seventh year going out to Tampa Bay. We swim in January and we swim across Tampa Bay to raise money for the, uh, the Navy SEAL Foundation. And as I was first started to do this, the classmate of mine just retired as a SEAL, and I learned that nearly 20% of their deaths occur in training, okay? Now, they're literally in a life or death uh, profession. Your business, you know, if you're not on top of your game, your business, you're dealing with life or death. And right now, with money being tight, People worried about the future, as we saw in that poll. Many people are worried. Uh, a lot of you, uh, I, I'd say this is a skewed audience, right? You're in sales, you're in marketing, you're an entrepreneur, you're a C-level executive. You might be a little more optimistic. You feel like you're a little bit more in control. Um, but I guarantee you the, the numbers would probably be reversed if we look at the general population. So you need to understand, again, can you enter the conversation, go on the mind of your prospects? How worried are they? And so how good is your training to handle the new objections, the stalls, the put-offs that you're going to be getting from these prospects? Um, you know, because the old adage is the more you bleed in training, the less you bleed in battle. So that's me a couple of years ago getting my first stripe in jujitsu and my blue belt. Uh, the guy on the right, he's my age, he's 50, he just got his black belt, he's crazy. And that guy in the middle is our instructor, uh, literally the best in the world in his age and, and division. And he always says, I've just failed more times than you've tried. Okay, so do you have procedures in place to put you and your team through the cycles so you're ready when it hits? And it's all going to hit, right? That's Hoyler Gracie. I don't know if y'all are jujitsu or MMA fans. He's, you know, his family started it. He was one of the guys winning all the time. Um, and the difference between amateurs and professionals, I was literally, I'd started one month before he came and did a, a conference. And you see our size difference. I mean, I'm a lot bigger than that guy. And he beats me in about 15 seconds, even after three and a half years of training. He still wins that fast. That's the difference between an amateur and a professional, okay? Because sales, you know, we, we like all this kumbaya stuff, right? It's a win-win and blah, blah, blah. The reality is sales is a zero-sum game, okay? That doesn't mean that the prospect or your customer loses, but it means your opponent has to lose, all right? In golf, you know, if you come in second place, you, know, you come in second place in a major tournament, you're still taking home 800000 almost a million dollars. 
But in business, if you are 1% worse than your competitor, you get nothing. Okay. So I just, I want to drive this point home. In this next slide, I'll go through, um, I usually on my presentations do it at the end. But in this case, I wanted to kind of open with it, but this is um, uh, the shot, an actual poster that's on the wall where we trained. Okay, and this is what it says. Everyone gets in jujitsu out of genuine interest. Face it, you have to be a certain type of person to let someone who's trying to hurt you get that close. Now I want you to replace jujitsu everywhere you see it with sales, with entrepreneurship, with being a business owner. Okay, because look, your prospect, yeah, they're not trying to physically hurt you, but they don't really care about your bottom line. Your competition does want to hurt your bottom line. All right, and right now, some of you are probably thinking, why the heck am I in business? All right, I should have kept that comfy job at that big company. But there seems to be a certain number of individuals that think the journey is easy and every moment will be filled. John, can you help me read that? I got, I'm on one slide here. Uh, I can't move the controls. I don't know what's happening. You can't move the controls? No, because uh, I'm on one. I don't know, it's not giving me my mouse. Oh, well, oh, they, yeah, they think it's gonna be easy, right? But it's not. For the first year or so, you will make a lot of mistakes. You won't be any good. You will come to every class, you have a lot of potential, potential but nothing will click. Everything you did before, all of your accomplishments, forget them. They will not keep you from getting smashed. John, when you were starting Goldmine or Nimble, were things difficult ever? Ha! You know, Wes, nobody hands you anything in life, uh, certainly anything worthwhile, and you have to get out there and make it happen. And I'll tell you what, the like the, you know, the moment before we turn that corner for success. I was probably in my bed crying like a baby, just saying, I can't take it anymore. And that's what you have to get to is that edge. I think you have to tear muscle to make muscle, they say. And so, uh, so I, I, very few journeys of entrepreneurship are easy, but the rewards are rich. And did anyone ever say, oh, you started gold mine. Okay, then we'll just do whatever you tell us to do on this next business. Oh, you have a degree, you have a bachelor's, you have a master's, you have a PhD. Okay, we'll do whatever you say, right? Business doesn't care. No. It's, what have you done for me lately, right? Yeah. So you're gonna get smashed, right? A lot of people never get past this stage, they quit. In fact, most people don't have a hard year, they have a hard few, all right? I think we have a hard few years coming up. Regardless of who wins the elections, there's, you know, the government and the, the Fed, whatever, they're doing things. Things have changed, all right, forever, kind of like after 9-11. You know, we kind of come back from that, but there are still things that were implemented that still haven't gone away. After 2008, 2009, right, people, some people are still rebuilding from that time. You're going to have some hard times. We know we have some missing links but we are one step away from a major breakthrough. We just don't know the solution. Everyone goes through this. If you read too much social media and all this marketing stuff, you think something's wrong with you because these people have nice cars and they're in private jets and mahogany wooden libraries filled with ancient first edition books. You know, a lot of that's fake. A lot of it shortcut taking. You can't beat yourself up. You cannot compare yourself to others. All right. All you can do is compare yourself to yourself yesterday. OK. And if you're just starting out, right, if you're still in this phase, you have to realize it's normal. And all you have to do is put in more time on the mats, be the first to arrive, the last to leave. Doesn't matter if you have to tap a little more, cry a little harder, drill a little longer. It's only by putting in sustained and focused effort that you will begin to reach the next level. The result of this will be technique as good as those who came before you and the metals on your wall will clink and every time you shut the door, your belt will look older than you. And in jujitsu, that's what you want. That old, that old belt means you've been through the ringer, okay? And you've proven yourself. It's gonna take a while, 
that's normal. You have to roll through the hardship and sometimes push through the pain. All right. So if you want to succeed, you got to know your numbers. All right. When if you've got a goal and you may have new numbers right now, hopefully you do have new numbers after COVID hit us and after the re shutdown, you're going to have to keep adjusting these numbers most likely. Hiding from them will not help. Ignoring them will not help. Okay. If you have to squint or look out of one eye or have your assistant or someone go log into your bank account or your CRM or whatever, you have to do that. Okay. Ignoring it is not going to help things look any better. In 1998, I'd been out of the Air Force like seven months, eight months, and I was laid off. I had a wife. I had a young son up there in the top right standing. We were pregnant with Matthew. I was on unemployment less than a year after I got out of the Air Force and was on unemployment when Matthew was made. I replied to a classified ad. It paid like $20 a week more than unemployment, and it was a draw against commission. All right. So what that means is they pay you a little bit, but when you sell something, they, they claw back whatever they've paid you until you've earned more commission than they've paid you in a draw. Like I said, it was about 20 bucks a week more than, than uh, unemployment, so I took it. Retail sales, basically working seven days a week down in Mobile, Alabama, selling mobile homes or manufactured homes, as some would say. But that's where I learned the scientific sales process. We literally had a flip chart like that on our, on our desk. Every prospect that walked onto the lot saw the flip chart because we were the only ones that had our mobile homes locked. So you couldn't just rummage through them. You had to come into the office. You had to sit down. Uh, you had to answer a few questions. That's how we created a profile on you. Then we did the demo. Okay. But what we were really doing was disqualifying the prospects. And in this system, and even today, there is a difference between qualifying and disqualifying. Everyone is not your prospect. Okay. You know, the old adage is everybody drinks water, so everybody's a prospect for bottled water. Yeah, well, good luck with that. And everybody's going to pay to have water delivered. Okay. And even if they did want it, it doesn't mean they want it today. Maybe they'll buy tomorrow, next week. Maybe they'll buy at the end of, end of the quarter. Okay. So disqualifying is more important than qualifying. So you need to understand who you serve, what they look like. What do they act like? What are the questions? Because I learned, I never understood how many people had bad credit. Okay. And in the course of the conversation, people would talk about that. Because I'd say, what are you looking for? What are you in now? What's driving this decision? You know, have you owned one before? Blah, blah, blah. Well, well, we're renting right now. We're hoping to get some land. Okay. Tell me about that. Well, our credit's not so good. Tell me about that. Well, we declared bankruptcy last year. Okay, I'm not walking through some hot, unair conditioned formaldehyde filled mobile home with this couple with a bankruptcy that's one year old. They're not going to qualify. But I can give them tours for two hours, right? If I don't ask these questions, okay, hearing no early is a win. Okay, then I can fill out a form, maybe get them in touch with a credit repair person, and then send them on their way and then follow up with them later. But now I'm free to talk to the next prospect. Too many times we hold on to anybody that can fog a mirror because we don't want a prospect. You have salespeople right now talking to people they shouldn't be talking to, pursuing people they shouldn't be pursuing because they don't want a prospect. Okay. You've got to have a process to uncover the truth quickly with everyone you're talking to. Okay. Working there, though, taught me a few things. That's Sam Payton, his wife, Marianne. We are still friends to this day. He was the general manager that hired me uh, from that classified ad. But I learned how to be tough, how to be humble, right? I mean, you don't go to the Air Force Academy and Texas A&M to go sell trailers. <laughs> it's just not, that's not a career path that my high school counselor had mapped out with me, okay? Um, Sam was a great mentor. He taught me the need for a process, okay? And he taught me this very advanced up system. John, would you like to see this? I, I think you're going to have to, you might enroll this into uh, 
into Nimble. You're going to have to pay me um, a royalty, though. But are, are you ready to see this? Let's go. I, I don't know if you're ready, because this is this is something else. I was born ready. The scientific up system. All right. So there were six salespeople. Um, and those those are our real names. West, Mark, Peter, Brett, and Brad. And then uh, there was another one, um, Johnny. But usually one of us would have a day off. Right. And the others were scheduled in in phases. Um, but we lit and we literally had a little whiteboard like that. The first one in put their name first on the board. And we got the first prospect that came to the lot. OK, so I quickly did the math. If I'm first. Then I only need six visitors to come onto the lot. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're back to number one. I only needed six visitors. If I'm fifth, then we needed 10 visitors for me to get two sales opportunities. Well, that's a 66% increase in numbers. I mean, people always say, I need more traffic, I need more traffic. No, you need more conversions, okay? You need to get to your desk earlier, stay a little later, to have more opportunities like this. But these guys, I mean, no kidding, Peter, Johnny, they couldn't make their rental payments on their mobile homes and they worked there longer than I did because they weren't disciplined. And all. And that guy, Mark, I literally, we were on a major road in North Mobile called Moffett Road, you can look it up. And I saw him driving to work, he was just ahead of me and uh, I blew past him and we literally were in a race. If you remember, uh, what was that Tom Cruise, Days of Thunder, where he's a NASCAR driver? And then they bang up all the cars. We didn't bang up our cars, but we were literally racing down that street and I beat him. Uh, so I wanted to be first. I had to be first. I had a wife and two kids counting on me to make some damn money. Okay. And it worked. I made exactly $100,000 those first 12 months. That's 145, 148 grand today. Um, and my rent was remember 345 bucks a month and I was made a general manager in 14 months because I knew my numbers. Okay. We did not overcomplicate things. We kept it simple. So get in the game, arrive early, stay late, do one more, one more call, one more email, one more letter, one more, whatever. Okay. If you're branching into something new, maybe you're getting into Instagram reels. I don't know, whatever. Be willing to do it poorly until you master it because you're going to be bad at it when you start. You've got to be willing to humble yourself and do that. All right. We'll get into the, your tech stack here in just a little bit about keeping it simple. Uh, but this is a spreadsheet and I'll give you the link here in just a second. Um, I've got a, a free calculator, no login, no nothing that you can use to work on your own numbers okay and just real quick you see that top row if your income goal is a hundred thousand dollars then how much do you make per deal if you make four hundred dollars a deal you have to do 250 deals to reach that income goal if you close half the people that you quote you've got to generate 500 quotes if those that you have a meaningful conversation with ask for 50 percent of those ask for a quote then you have to engage with a hundred, well, with a thousand people. And if out of those that you re, that you call, that begin a chat, whatever your conversation mode is, right? If 50% of those end up in a conversation, then you can see every day you got to start. You got to be doing eight interact. You got to start with eight outreaches. Okay, now through this spreadsheet, you can start changing the numbers. So I changed it from 50% to 20% in the beginning. Boom. You go from eight to 21. What if you make $800 instead of $400? Okay, then you're back down to 10, even with that 20% ratio. What if you improve your chats to quote to 75% and still 800? Okay, now you're at four. Okay, everything impacts everything else. Nothing is an island, nothing's a silo in your business, in anything that you do. Um, if you wanna jot that down, 
uh, sales dash, cal dash calculator. And it's just, like I said, no opt-in, no nothing, just go use it. And I've got two calculators there. One shows your activity um, and then what you're going to earn. And the other lets you put in what you want to earn. And then it tells you what your activity needs to be. Okay, so start with that and then start, well, I'm gonna show you a few more things around breaking down this process. You gotta know your numbers. Okay, and this is a simple spreadsheet I made in Apple. You can use Google Sheets, Excel, whatever. Uh, start with the one I give you and then uh, modify it from there. But look, I, like you see here, right? That 20%, the 800 versus 475% versus 50%. Small hinges swing big doors. Small changes, incremental changes earlier in your process have big impacts. You know, the analogy I always use is, you know, if an airplane starts out from LA and it's going to New York, if it's off by one degree, you know, by the time it gets to where it should be, it's off like 300 miles or something crazy. Okay, so the longer the distance, the, the more steps the more touches, the more handoffs you have to do in your business, um, the more the little changes matter. And most people, they they overestimate what they can do in a year, but you underestimate what you can do in three or five. Everybody wants that big lick, like right away. But it may take some time, you know? So are you willing to stick it out and measure and monitor and adjust and test and keep adjusting? You know, this guy did this. You know, throw throw in the chat for me. Why do you think Henry Ford is a household name? And I, I was just, I wasn't even looking at it for this for this presentation, but I was looking up uh, the price of cars and, and during the Great Depression and all of something else. And I think it was like 1924, 25, something like Henry Ford. There were 10 million cars in the world and Ford made half of them. Literally half the cars in the world were made by Ford. Uh, but why do you think he's a household name? Have any answers? Any he marked the drummer and he innovated. He was innovative, yep. Of course he's known for the assembly line, right? Yeah. So that word is process. The assembly line is kind of a foregone conclusion right now, but back then um, he would have like three guys on a team and they would build the entire car, okay? They'd have to be carpenters, engineers, uh, good with upholstery. So, you know, the price of a car was like, I wanna say $750 when the average income, annual income of workers at that time were like 350 bucks a year, okay? So he literally was able to slash the price of cars in half, which gave him that leg up. But to make this assembly line work, you have to, you have to look at every step. Okay, where do we start? Do we start with the axles? Do we start with the frame? Can we get the motor in? When, when is the transmission? Should we connect the transmission first? If the transmission goes first, then drop in the engine, then connect it. You know, um, and he he was so diligent when they would ship the motors, right? He would he would get different components, you know, tires, whatever. Um, he made them put them in certain size boxes because he would break those boxes apart and those became the floorboard and the roof. OK, but it's these types of processes you've got to drill down. So another free tool I'll give you is not PBR, because I'm going to drink that PBR, but I'll give you what I call my process before login. Even though this webinar is sponsored by a technology person, okay, I want you to write some things down before you start clicking buttons, before you start free trials, before you start, you know, a paid trial or whatever write it down first. Um, and another free resource for you, just the saleswhisper.com slash PBL, stands for process before login. I've got a video, I've got a, a PDF that gets you thinking through planning, the, the analogy or the, the sample I give you is from doing a webinar. You know, what do I do if somebody, you know, what am I gonna send? How am I gonna invite them? What's the headline? What's in it for them? What's the action I want them to take? 
What happens if I send an email and they don't open? What happens if they open but don't click? What happens if they click but they don't register? What happens if they register but don't attend? What happens if they attend but they don't buy? Okay, you've got to think through those steps before you start tinkering with software. Most people come to me and they're just overwhelmed. And they want to blame the software. And it's usually not the software's fault. Okay. It's garbage in, garbage out. So you need to understand this concept that I call the make every sale concept. And to make any sale, you must make every sale. And people will ask me, you mean you close every sale? I'm like, Here, here's the deal. Here's the reality. Okay. I, I literally met my wife at a country bar in California when I was in the Air Force. And uh, next month will be our 25th anniversary. All right. We made eye contact at this bar. But you know what? Even before that, I made plans to go. As part of my preparation, I showered. Put on deodorant and cologne. Not old cologne. Not too much cologne. I shined my boots. Had my clothes dry cleaned. Okay, all of those were little sales. We size each other up, right? Made eye contact. I asked her to dance. We didn't have Instagram back then. They didn't have cell phones, so I just asked for her home phone number. Invited her to dinner. We went on dates two to twenty-two. We met the family. We picked out rings. We tied the knot. Okay. Now, in any system, in any process, you can shorten it a bit. You can skip one step. You might be able to skip two. OK, I might have been able to walk up to her and said, you're so beautiful. You want to go to dinner. All right. Maybe it would have worked. But if you skip more than two, you're in trouble. OK, and the same thing in business. And I want to take you from this linear pipeline. This top down funnel concept. And this is what I call the ABCDE system. It's attract, bond, convert, deliver and deer. But instead of it being linear, right, your pipeline, your funnel, just jam enough crap in one side, maybe something will dribble out the end. It's like, it's such a horrible concept. It's a numbers game. Just throw enough crap against the wall, something's bound to stick. And it's like, it's not a something, it's a person. Okay, so how do you attract? What is your lead magnet? What is your free report, your webinar, your, your infographic, your calculator? What is it? Okay. What are you doing to attract people to your trade show booth, to your place of business? What are you giving them that's enticing enough that they will opt in? So you can then bond with them. Multimedia, multi-step. Can you get their email? Can you get their full name? Can you get their cell phone number? Can you get their address and mail them something? People can't opt out of direct mail. Okay. Everything is connected. Now, the conversion, we typically think of a conversion as somebody opts in on your website for something. You know, I call it the actual, this is where the relationship happens. This is where they become a customer, a client. Uh, the cash is handed over. And if you'll notice, out of these five steps, this is only the midway point. Remember we're talking about amateurs versus rookies or versus professionals, amateurs think that the sale is the end goal. Just like me with my wife. I mean, 25 years ago was the goal just to get married. Like, is it over now? Or does the real work really begin? Right? That's where the commitment is solidified. They've given you the cash. Now you have to deliver. You have to delight. You have to wow them. If you can do that, now you'll endear yourself to them. Now you have people singing your praises, giving you testimonials, writing blog posts about you, taking pictures and sharing it on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else. And then what happens, right? Birds of a feather. I guarantee you, when my wife hops on, on Facebook and says she likes a hairstylist or a pediatrician, uh, we're having our kitchen cabinets redone right now, and it's not very pleasant <laughs> when she shares that experience, right? The pediatrician will grow. The, the cabinet guy will not because birds of a feather. 
and now you're right back at the beginning. If you can do all this right, instead of cramming stuff in a pipeline and, and thinking holistically, right? That's when you get repeat business, you get referrals and testimonials, it gets easier and easier and easier. So you have to think beyond the sale, okay? Think, what do you have to do to get three sales from this customer? If you do that, your business is gonna get a lot easier. And you know, I would say, I would ask John to close his eyes, but John's a good guy. He's, he's not, even though he's in technology, John understands technology is not the answer. We need to remember that there's humans on the other end of these screens. Okay, technology just helps good companies grow and it helps bad companies go out of business faster. All right, that's, that's the reality. You need to treat your technology like salt. You put too much salt in a meal, the meal is ruined. Okay, you can't, oh yeah, maybe you can add some more rice, whatever, but it's hard. Or then you end up with more than you want it, right? And then it's wasted. Your technology is the same way. So I say process before login. Write this stuff out. Enter the conversation going on in the mind of the prospect. Understand what their challenges are. Is it COVID? Do they read books? How do you want to engage with these people? Okay. Where's my clicker? There we go. You know, and I would say at any time, but especially right now, you want to succeed? Hang on. Your competitors are going to be dropping. Okay. The, the government aid, you know, is they're going to give more money, but it is officially ended right now. And whatever does come is going to be lower than what was given, right? I don't think they're going to give the $600 a week from the feds. Um, so we're going to start seeing a change August, September, October, so all the way through the year and certainly into Q1. Okay, so things may be tough right now, I get it, uh, but if you believe in what you do, if you know you, you have a solid value proposition, even in these unprecedented times, you got to hang on. Okay, now, sometimes you got to know when to quit, okay, and I don't know where you are, but I think most of us quit too soon. Okay, hang on. You know, we, we know this quote from Edison, you know, oh, I just found 2,000 ways, you know, that won't work. You know, it's like, Give me a break. It's true, but it's hard when you're going through that. You know, they say that in jujitsu. Oh, you didn't, you know, you either win or you learn. It's like, it took me two, two and a half years to finally accept that. I felt like such a loser when I'd lose, you know, but now I understand, you know, my biggest lessons that stuck were from losses versus wins. Okay. But it's it's hard to be super optimistic when just, you know, it's Armageddon all around you. That's why I say you got to understand you got to hold on. You're probably going through some things. I hope this works. Oh, there's my mouse. Good. Because this is. This is reality for a lot of us. John, was this you ever do that? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I, I, I modified one of my earlier presentations from a few years ago. And when I outlined, when I outlined in that presentation, all my failures, I was like, holy crap, nobody's going to want to talk to me if they see all that. But it's like, the fact is I failed a lot, but stuck it out, you know, and still made it through. Lived to tell about it with a wife, seven kids, you know, a wife has stayed home for 25 years. So we're doing something right. Uh, but mistakes are going to happen. Losses are going to happen. Okay, that's why I asked about you know, how many tabs do you have open. If you really want to succeed, I want more of you to get bored. Okay, I think people are too amped up. They're tense, grinding their teeth, sleep apnea, you know, need 12 coffees to wake up. They need all kind of drugs to go to sleep. Then they toss and turn. We got too much going on. You need to take some things off your plate. I tell people in my in my private uh, training, I make them unsubscribe like right away from at least ten things right away, and then I push them to to unsubscribe from even more as we go through the training. You don't need that many distractions, okay? Busy is so overrated. 
but hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm busy, man. Busy, busy. Oh, that's good. But no, it's not. It's not good. <laughs> We're working ourselves to death. Busy is exhausting. And and here's something interesting. And you always find your your typos when you're live, right? So breakthrough boredom is when breakthroughs happen, not happy. Boredom is when the breakthroughs happen. When you are totally frantic, you literally get tunnel vision. You can't focus. I couldn't tie the string. I couldn't tie my name tag on a duffel bag. Big strapping young man. Couldn't tie a string. Am I going to have any breakthroughs in that moment? Hell no. I just want to survive. When you're bored and your mind is free and you can think about things, you're literally moving up Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You can think of something new. Remember, small hinges swing big doors. You don't need to reinvent electricity. You don't have to invent cold fusion. Right? Apple just made a little bit better device, glass front, and ran with it. The iPod, right? A thousand songs in your pocket. Uh, you know, MP3 players had been around. They didn't invent them. They just made them a little different, a little better. But if you haven't had these kind of breakthroughs, and I'd be willing to bet you probably haven't with all the turmoil that's going on, you know, and some have, right? Some like just out of sheer necessity, like I've got to change my business right now or I won't make it. Okay, that that back against the wall marketing, that that does work. <laughs> you just, you can't live your life that way, okay? So I want you to seek some solitude, seek some boredom, okay? And I promise you, you're going to get some breakthroughs. Things are going to get better for you. All right. Uh, last couple slides here. You know, if you want to succeed, redefine success. Literally play a little more. Okay. And that kind of goes with the boredom, but it, it's similar, but different. It's, it's downtime, right? It, it's non work time. Uh, we were meant to play. We were meant to rest. You recharge your batteries. Creativity will come through. OK, but people always ask, oh, you travel a lot, whatever. I'm like, no, I don't really travel a lot. You know, we were out here in June because we were on a, on a RV trip with my whole family. Uh, but I've stayed home for the most part. I've turned down gigs. You know, I train jujitsu three hours a day in the middle of the day. I leave at 1130, come back at two, shower. I mean, it's three hours. I've redefined what I think is success. I could have made more money. Could have traveled more, but I've been away from home and I didn't want to do that. So don't let other people spend your paychecks and your commissions. Okay. You define what success looks like. Maybe success is only working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, and it includes reading three hours a day, whatever. Okay. You've got to make that your own. So, you know, this has paid off for me. I've traveled the world. I've spoken Slovenia a couple of years ago. Like I said, took the family to to uh, Hawaii. Took them on a three-week RV trip so we could catch the Rona back in June. Uh, I make good money, and I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of successful. Written a couple books. Uh, Sales Whisper Away uh, is my most recent. I don't have a boss. Uh, I can choose how I spend my days. If you want a signed copy, you can go there. 79stories.info. Um, and then I'll, I'll sign it. My wife will mail it. All right. So, um, you get that. Um, and then finally, there's, uh, two options for you. If you are interested, um, if you want to continue the conversation, I've got a free group on Facebook called the Implementor. So it's part implementation, part mentorship, not only from me, but from the others, everybody, you know, they share tips, they help one another. You get better when you teach someone else. OK, um, and I'm starting a, a small group, the five, so five uh, entrepreneurs um, for five weeks of just kicking butt and taking names. Uh, and that's going to start in two weeks. If you're interested, check that out at uh, the five US. Uh, you know, let's grow together. And with that, I'll hand it over to John. Well, Wes. Thank you for uh, sharing your wisdom. There's a few things that stuck out to me 
Um, one of the things that you talked about when you talked about um, things don't come to you when your mind is uh, busy. I really believe that when my mind is quiet, my best ideas come to me and they come right. naturally. Uh, when you're when you're trying to find the idea, it doesn't happen. It it has to happen by itself. Um, right. The other thing that struck me is what do they call the instructors at the Air Force Academy the, the in boot camp? Uh, well, that's down in Lackland, actually, at, at the, what they call the real Air Force. We used to call it. So that was uh, they're called training instructors down in San Antonio. Yeah, I really believe that. Uh, uh, that people, most people needed an instructor, right? They need a coach. And sure. uh, I got in the best shape of my life when I had a, when I had a coach. And, um, and, uh, and I think we, we learn better. And I think the, go back uh, one slide. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your books are a great way to learn. I think that you provide people structure and ideas. I think we all need structure to succeed. Uh, I think that the basics wins games and, and you're right. You need to make X amount of calls in order to have Y amount of sales and you can either increase your conversions or the amount of outreaches or whatever, but you have to know your numbers and do the process. And so for those listening, definitely reach out to Wes. Uh, he's a good guy. You can learn more. Uh, he has some tools that you could use. I recommend uh, definitely engaging. And now is a, a good time to uh, punch in your questions um, for us to answer and go forward one slide there, Wes. Uh, for those of you that uh, haven't tried Nimble yet, Nimble is a great uh, tool that you could use around the processes that uh, Wes is recommending. Uh, there's a 30-day trial. You can sign up at nimble.com offers webinar. If you are not a subscriber yet, we're gonna give you 40% off your first three months. Just use the code John40 when you do uh, convert. And um, and so uh, uh, while we're waiting for some more questions, I see a question here. Uh, and the question is, what is the most important thing you do each morning you get up, Wes? Um, you know, it's tied to the night before, um, I get up early, you know, I'm up by five, uh, every day. And, um, in order to get up early, um, I've got to go to bed early and get good sleep. So you got to watch what you eat, what you drink, um, and be disciplined just like that ABCD, right? Everything is interconnected. So I do uh, my best writing and thinking in the morning before things get hectic. That's why I get up early um, so I can write. Uh, I've written a daily blog for over three years on the on a Bible verse. Um, I do that every day regardless. Uh, like I said, I've not missed it for over three years. Uh, I exercise um, at least five days a week, you know, but I don't do that first thing in the morning. I usually do it midday. Uh, but just waking up early and starting with momentum um, is so important. And um, I, I can't, I can't overstress that. I like, I like what you said there. I think definitely um, the first thing you do in the morning is essentially the, uh, follow through on the prep that you did the night before, because ultimately it is all about preparation. And, right. uh, and I think that that's a, an important uh, concept there. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it, Wes. Uh, thank you so much. Give us some uh, parting words as we go out the door. <laughs> Keep listening to John. <laughs> I follow you. Your, your, your five E's I still uh, refer back to. Um, so, you know, I appreciate you putting this on and inviting me. And, um, you know, I just try to surround myself with good people, man. And, and good things happen when that happens. So, you know, life life is too short not to. And and just for the audience who's listening here uh, today, I just want to say that even though Wes and I do not agree 100% politically, we do agree 1,000% on what we value in life. And what I call the five... Uh, the five F's of life, family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship. These are the commonalities 
that will bind you to another human being when you share those commonalities to develop the intimacy and trust that you need uh, in order to ideally get that person to open up to you about uh, about their needs and their path so that you could blow some wind in their sails. Because I think that's why we're on this planet is to grow. And we do that best by helping other people grow. And I think that sales is an incredible profession where you could serve other people and help them grow. And if you do that at scale, you could build a gold mine. And so I just wanted to share, Wes, that <laughs> even though we do not agree uh, on a lot of the political divisional topics. I'd have to say that you're one of my dear friends and I just want to thank you for your time today, inspiring and educating uh, our audience here. Um, my pleasure. All right, and with that, please do connect. Uh, is, our, is there a slide for our connection, our, um, our uh, contact info? There, there we go. go. Uh, connect with uh, with Wes on whatever channel is most effective for you. Uh, my email is john, J-O-N, at nimble.com. Reach out. Uh, let us know how we can help you grow. And with that, have a great rest of the week. Uh, good luck and good selling. Adios, amigos and amigas.